footy is back. That's right, it is, and it's round six. G'day, I'm the legendary Geelong player Stephen Whiskers Hockey. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm James Clements, and I'm the host here at AFL Today. That's right, we're breaking down every little bit and bob for Aussie rules footy when it comes to round six. That was what we do here. We just make the footy stuff a bit of fun. I'll tell you. And joining me are local weirdos, a.k.a. footy nuffs, a.k.a. AFL experts. We use that term very loosely. It's Leo over there. What's going on, Leo? Jim, feeling good? Feeling good. Ooh. Really? I mean, the cool thing is you're going up against the stats boy yes. this week. Biggest game of the year, Hawks versus Talk about that boxing fight? Or, yeah, uh, yeah. And, that, and that boxing fight yeah, beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, Kane Corn style. No, I'm very excited for that game. Uh, Are you? Very nervous, but very excited. <laughs> I'm yeah. not excited. <laughs> you're not excited? <laughs> might have been excited. I don't, know, I don't know. You might be the only one. Yeah. We could, if we get a win, I get to sing the song. I get to come in here in the studio on Sunday night and be happy. You don't want to put yourself through the game, even if it's close. Ah, it's just get a few beers, it'll fix me up, we'll be right. Nice. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's all we've got time for now. That's a lot of North Hawth. Ah, no. Subscribe to our YouTube channel all across all the socials as well. You can check out Sports Today show on the old facey as well. And, of course, like, subscribe, and star it wherever you get your podcast. But the cool thing is, I had this moment the other day. I'm like, ah, it's around six. How are we a quarter of the way through the season? I know. What is going on? Yeah. I love footy. <laughs> Extend this. This is ridiculous. I'm like, as soon as I thought that, I'm like, that's gross. And I just like a shiver down my spine. I'm like, and then Dingus over there, uh, Alex, on the Wednesday show is like, Jim, you know they don't have Thursday night footy after like June 13. Yeah, I'm like, sad, don't yeah. tell me these things. <laughs> Let him be sad then. Yeah. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> that should be something that creeps up for me right as it happens. Like, what do you mean there's no footy next week <laughs> on Thursdays? This sucks. Anyway. Let's get into round six, though. It is a huge, like, this week might be the best week we've had all year as well yeah, in yeah, terms of definitely. matchups. Competitive games. Yep. Everything's super close, even down to the really, really bad teams like your two teams yeah. playing each other. That's kind We're of We're the fun. only two teams that have a win, so we need to get one. <laughs> Somebody it's going to be a draw. It, <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I'm going to put a few shackles on the, uh, on the draw. But we do have no <laughs> Richmond or Melbourne, which is good because at the moment Richmond are not fun to actually watch, and Melbourne are never really that fun to watch. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, but... Thursday night footy, Thursday night footy <laughs> is starting in a little bit. Uh, we obviously cover that on our Wednesday show. Yep. Uh, I have now since changed my pick. Ooh. It was the Western Bulldogs, but when they announced after we did our show yesterday that Jamara Eugle Hagen was going to be out uh, with personal reasons, I'm like, that is probably the one step too far for me without Libba, without Jamara. I'm going to go the Saints by four. Uh, it was before that the Dogs by mm. four. A typical close game. Especially when think. Rory loves the replacement for Jamara. That's a big drop off, isn't it? It really, <laughs> look, he'll probably kick like two goals and they'll be the most ungainly, stupid looking two goals that Might you'll be ever early, see. Yeah, but yeah. They also bring in James Harms and Riley Garcia. Uh, James Harms and Riley Garcia. Mm -hmm. uh, Max King, obviously, out. We talked about that yesterday. Oscar Baker, uh, the beloved ginger, uh, <laughs> as well as uh, Libba misses. Uh, but how were you sitting that? Have you changed your pick at all, Stats Boy? You're sticking with St Kilda? Nah, I was, I'm all on the Saints in this one. This is a classic game where the Saints are favourites and they could lose, but I think they're just a much better overall team and how they're tracking. Yeah. It is a tricky one. Saints by four goals. If they lose, they are a uh, disgrace. Oh, they are it checks out. They've got, to, they've got to win this. Yep. Game. There you go. Check out the full breakdown yesterday. Now, let's get into the rest of the games for round six. Yes. Just still breaks my heart. Round six. What were we doing the first five weeks? Lots of stuff. Watching footy. <laughs> a lot at the of same stuff. time. Like, the gather around. It was, it was a bit of everything. It's chaos. Like, it's just been so, like, whirlwind. Anyway, let's do it. Friday night. Friday night footy. <laughs> Friday night footy. <laughs> <laughs> just going to go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I love doing that. It's It annoys the five-year-old when you just, like, sort of screw with the song just enough and, like, you break your voice and it's, like, great. Adelaide Oval, though, it's 7.40 p.m. 13.5 point favourites are the Crows – which is about right, considering they're playing at home. Yeah, I think whoever was home would have that line, Yeah, I think, between yeah. these two. Yeah, I feel like it's a little bit generous. Like, to me, it's maybe, kind of yeah. like maybe eight and a half would be a little bit more. I mean, Essendon last week, like, you look at this, like, that Bombers team, you're like, oh, I don't know what to expect. No. Now they're on the road. Yeah. Okay, sure. So yeah. the overrun is 173.5. I feel like that's not high enough. I'd expect a little bit more because we saw Essendon put up a score last week and Adelaide obviously did as well. But Adelaide are the second worst offense in the comp gym. So I don't know. I don't know if... Adelaide did still, however, manage to put up a score last, last week. Last week they put the a Blues, big score. Like up. at Marvel, right? So yeah. So if they're back, they can put up a big score. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That was say more about Carlton though? Did Possibly, they, yeah. they also did kick, what, like 16-2? 
Yeah. yeah. So 16-4 or something? Yeah, 16-4. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so maybe, helps, yeah. maybe not. Mm. And But my big point for that is, though, I don't think either of these teams are, like, defensively inclined. No, no. You're right. So definitely not. I feel like the over is my play there. Mm-hmm. All right, take us through some of the ideas here, Stats Boy, for some of the stats. Uh, well, Essendon have won their last six matches against the Crows, which surprised me a little bit. Last six, including last year by three goals. was pretty close uh, last year. Adelaide, as I just said before, 17th in offense. They're only averaging 65 points. I think Alex has mentioned that a bunch of times. That's still after they scored 100. Was it 101, 100 last week? Last week. Yeah, 100 100 on the dot. And they're still only averaging 65. That's a big worry. So that would have been like the 50s. Uh, Essendon also were belted in their last trip at Adelaide Oval when we were there in Gadda Round. So they're they're not too bad at the Adelaide Oval, Essendon, but their their recent trips there have been abysmal. Interesting. Mm. Ins and outs. Uh... We've got Butts and Crouch obviously out for the Crows. Butts is injured. Crouch has been suspended. Jai Menzies out for the Dons. Um, the Inns, it's like what? Belace and uh, Scholl, who right. have gone in and out in three times, out. I reckon, this season already. Literally, yeah. S- Manny Nix can't make up his bloody mind. These two are probably that, thinking, I thought I was all right. That's not good for their confidence. No, that's it's not at all. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> funny, though. Actually, yeah, <laughs> for it, us. It, it is pretty for funny, us. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's very weird. They're just a couple of yo-yos, man. Yeah. In and out, in and out, in and out. And off you go. Um, and for the bomb rays. Yeah, Sartas. Uh, well, <laughs> say that again. I forgot. <laughs> say that again. How do you say, say his name again? Sartas. Sartas. Yeah, Sartas. Sartas. I don't know. That sounds way better. Sartas. <laughs> like a bit of Fantasia. That sounds better. Yeah. It is a weird matchup. <laughs> and I just went, whatever. Cool. The big question here is, can Essendon play well two weeks in a row? Well, Probably I actually not. wrote that in there, but then now that I think about it, same that you could put that for Adelaide as well. Can either of these teams play well two weeks in a row? The way Adelaide were 0-4, mm. snuck by Carlton because Carlton capitulated the right at the end and yep. completely cooked that game. Essendon, that was a crazy bounce back after the week prior, right? So, I don't know. I think the dogs didn't take their chances. I think it was, what was it, the second quarter the second where they quarter. dominated well, and that should have been a much closer game, whereas Adelaide at home, surely I think they're going to click into gear at some point. I said they were going to have a really big season. They haven't. But they've got the, the personnel to do that. So I think, yeah, I think Adelaide can win uh, pretty comfortably. And, Is that your yeah. pick? Yeah. Oh, we're going to, if I'm getting into my pick, Adelaide by 15, maybe even more, I reckon. Yeah, at home, I don't give Essendon a chance. I think Adelaide win as well. I think Essendon have actually been a bit lucky this year with opposition scores being like very, very inaccurate. Yeah, yeah. Looking at expected score last week, Dogs actually were meant to win by a point. I know you don't read into it. Oh, too we got much. XG. Here we go. Why yeah. not? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. It, it's a good indication of how many like, inside fifties and shots um, on goal. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like a lot of Essendon's goals are, are quite fluky, like outside fifty, like yeah. Stringer winning a goal against St Kilda outside fifty, things like that. Yeah, I, I, look, I just think they're a bit lucky, so I'm going the Crom here. Yeah, the Crom. Not bad. the The Bombers are just such a hard read. Yeah. Right. Well, some I think you had them in your finals. Oh, Most people yeah. didn't. I had them and the dogs in finals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Most people didn't, but they're just so hard because I like, just can't. Like I want. You could take... see him finishing eighth, but well, then you could see him finishing twelfth. Initially, yeah. I was taking yes and but I can't. I'm going Adelaide by one. One. Right there. It's going to be an absolute point. breathtaking finish at the Adelaide Oval. Nice. Saturday, the Pies take on South Australian Pies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Collingwood versus Port Adelaide. Billies, Coll- isn't that the, isn't that the pie? <laughs> the pie. <laughs> Collingwood are only three and a half point favourites against the Power, which makes sense because Collingwood have not been good this year. The Power have been pretty good and very good. Yeah, are sort of just cruising along uh, to a point where they snuck by Frio last week in pretty dramatic fashion. They're a bit lucky to win that one. Yeah, yeah. just very. I don't know, year 12 high school drama, just like there's a bit of overacting. It's just <laughs> yeah. a, little bit, a little bit wonky. Everyone feels a bit uncomfortable yeah, watching yeah. it. You know, that kind of good gear. But the power, I mean, well, they lost to Melbourne a couple of weeks ago, right? And it's aside from that, this is at the G. This is the big one for me. So they're yeah. at the G, ergo, Collingwood are favourites, three and a half points. Over under 166.5. Uh, it's a tricky one, that one. I'd probably say over. Because Collingwood's defense hasn't been as good as last year, as we've pointed out. No Nathan Murphy now. Obviously, he's retired, so they can't rely on him, who was an absolute gun in defense for him. So I'd say the over and Porter, yeah. the third best offense in the league, averaging over 101 points a game, Jim. That's right. So I'd be going over. Yeah, right? I, reckon, what do you reckon? I reckon over as well. I reckon a bit of a shootout, maybe. Ooh. Like, I don't know about Port. I know they're third office in, offense in the league, but Dixon out. We'll see Dixon how they is can big structure. Out, yeah. But, mm. yeah, look, I, I think... It still should hit the over. There's enough firepower there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Probably. I think. think? Like, it's, it's, it could be one of those random, like, annoying games where it's back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Like a bit of aerial ping pong because we've got two pretty good midfields. Yeah. Very and, exciting. Yeah. Just sort yeah. of depends on 
whoever actually gets those inside 50s takes their chances, right? Yeah. I think the more on Finlayson, like being out as well, doesn't help things. He's tried to follow up again on that on that podcast thing. Uh, I had a look Dig at some, up, stupid. They, Dig they up. They got rid of that part of the podcast. The rest of the podcast was all right. But just don't is be he an idiot, mate. Is he mate. flopping around? He like, is a little. He said something. Like, he said something uh, again in the media. Was it Pauline Hanson? Pauline. <laughs> 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 Comparing <laughs> Jerry Finlayson to Pauline. <laughs> he'll love that. I think he'll, he'll love Amazing. that. Amazing. Jordan Sweet comes in for Charlie Dixon, though, who's outmanaged. So, yes. Which is a weird one because it sort of just leaves Port Adelaide pretty bereft up front. Like, it's a lot mm. of Todd Marshall. Jordan Sweet's a very... Uh, sorry, a decent ruckman, I like him, but yeah. he's not uh, not very good forward. I don't think. No, it's a, no. it's a big difference dropping out Dixon, who's just an angry man. Yeah, lot rides on marks, uh, Marshall. Yeah. yeah, just send JHF forward and off we go. Yeah, it actually might. Yeah, uh, fascinating one though. Answer the big question: Should Port wear the prison bars during the warm-ups? 100%. Yes, and in the game, and in the game, <laughs> and after the game when they win. After the game, oh, that, actually, I don't care when they wear it. If they win. And they're just wearing it in the huddle. Oh, that would be so Anything that trolls Koshy Collingwood just, fans. Koshy just about. in the middle having a good they, giggle. They sing the song out on the ground. Oh. The <laughs> <laughs> like, no, walk off like under 10 style. Like, yeah, sing the I song. I love it. Uh, but this is like an awesome midfield matchup, right? You've got mm, very Dacos, Dagoe, the other Dakai, yeah. uh, <laughs> Rosie and Butters. Yeah, I, this is just, just fun to watch. Ben Francis. Francis. JHF. Paul Francis. Um, yeah. Ollie Let Wines. <laughs> The just the giant head of Willem Drew. God, it's gonna oh, be gonna say Wines Wines Wines. He's got giant. They head? call him Lego head. Yeah, Wine's got a massive box head. That's like um Brad Evert was called Mega Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You said Willem Drew Willem Drew's just head. got a giant forehead. Like Does I don't he? know, just oh. he's got the ginger hair as well. Just so why you, would you, do you love him? <laughs> the thing is, I think Port come to the MCG and make this a bit of an upset. I'm Ooh. gonna say Port by fourteen. This, this was the one I was tossing and turning the most, I reckon. Uh, lose so I, sleep over it? or What was that? Did you lose sleep uh, over no, it? No, I didn't lose sleep, but I, I, I could tell I was tossing and turning <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the night. Uh, now I'm going Collingwood by four. I think at the G, I st- as you said, they haven't been too good, but I feel like they've got to get back to their best at some point. I think that can be this week. And they've had a, they've had the bye, was it? Yeah, yeah last, last week. week yeah. They've got to freshen up. They'll be all right, I think. So I'm going to go Collingwood by four. I yeah. feel like if this were a evening or night game, mm. I would like the pies. Yeah. But it's a random why, afternoon Why is game. this at 145? This is a great matchup. This should be the one tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Because you got the derby. The derby's usually on Sunday Arvo, which I love is watching. It? The, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it usually is at Optus Stadium, Sunday Arvo, and the, the uh, Perth fans absolutely love it there. So I was surprised that was on Saturday night. And then you got this game at 145 on a Saturday when yes. a lot of people are at playing footy and things like that. So I don't know. That's a bit Leo, weird. who are you taking? Pies by two goals. I think the home factor as well as the fact that Pies, they got the buy. They had the buy. Mm-hmm. They got the get get right win in round in gather round against the Hawks. So they now have the buy. Good week off to rest. I think they'll come back and f- and fire up. I reckon. Yep, I can see that. I'm just liking the way that Port yeah. are playing at the moment. No, it's not a bad. You're liking it. Good about uh, it. Yeah. I'm yeah. liking it. I'm liking it. That's why. Yeah, I haven't said that in a while. Are you also mossing it because it's just a bit of liking? <laughs> bit of liking. Do you trust them? Do you trust, don't trust him. <laughs> Carlton versus GWS, Saturday afternoon. I'll be there at this one. The Blues are three and a half point favourites over the ladder leaders, which is a bit weird, but then you think about the ins and outs for this game. And it's a weird balance, right? Because Carlton lose uh, Mitch McGovern yep. and Adam Saad. Very we're important all, players. Already yes. we're without Adam Chera. Mm. They bring in the cow man. Lucky Moo. cow. Moo. Every time he kicks it. And Lewis Young, Moo. basically, as the sort of attempt at a like-for-like like defender for McGovern. Mm. Uh Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Not really. He plays bigger than he is, Lewis Young. He's okay. He's, he's okay. He's okay right one on one, but he's, he's not, not as good as McGovern. Not he's not getting those inset marks yeah. that Mitch loves to get. In come Callan Ward and Leek Lear for the Giants in place of obviously the concussed yeah. massive outs. Sam Taylor and Stephen Coniglio. So this is why I give the Blues a little bit of a chance here. Um that is big, 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 big outs for the GWS Giants because yep. I don't know, Carlton's one strength this year has been Kick it to Charlie, Charlie and Harry, Harry yeah. Like, and, and if you take Sam Taylor out of that, because he he can sometimes go in between yeah. the both of them and take a mark. So yeah, GWS like did win thirty by thirty two last time they met Stats Boy. Yes, and, uh, they, they did won nine of the last ten. But Carlton did win a weird game at the Showgrounds start of last year, yep. around this time last year actually, um, before the wheels fell off the Blues. This might be where the wheels fall off for the Blues, but oh, it's too early. You could not. To fall off. Could not ask to get GWS, I think, at a better time. Like, if you're going to play mm. GWS, who've looked awesome all season. You take two of their best players You take out, yeah. two of their best mm. dudes out. Yeah. You're feeling okay about it. The big question is, what will Jim's heart rate be during <laughs> I, this game? I have to chuck your heart rate question in there. 
It'd be very hot. Probably, Maybe we should get a trucker. Uh, probably unhealthy <laughs> is where I'm at. 220 minus your age. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm thinking. 220 minus my I think, age. I think it's 220 <laughs> plus, plus your age. No, 220 minus your age. I know, is that's what it's heart rate. Yeah, Max, but I reckon yeah, it's going to be 220 uh, plus. That's what his heart rate's going to be. Yeah, Coming through the that room. That went over my head. Yeah. Double up on that one. I was having Ambo standing by. A few, <laughs> should, wow. a few tins. Jeez, I don't a few that. tins. I'll be sitting there with the five-year-old, the squid. Uh, I don't want him to see him disappointed two weeks in a row. He was just oh. like, "Dad, is it over?" I'm like, "Yes." Just, no. just tell him you won. Very frustrated. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just tell him you won. Why are all those Carlton fans on the train? Over saying? under is one seventy-five and a half as well. I think this goes under. I think Carlton <laughs> eke Ooh. out just an ugly, gross, grinded out. Ooh. 78 to like 60 win. So Carlton by 18, Ooh. I've got the end. I'm going well over, I reckon. I reckon this yeah, could be 200 plus agree, because reckon. Carlton two-way running, we've discussed, isn't amazing. You've got GWS who are amazing on the counter attack and then you've got no Sam Taylor at one end and you've got no Mitch McGovern at the other. I think there's going to be goals galore. Two really good offences. So I'm just I'm more worried well about over. like what we sort of saw from Carlton and Adelaide last week at Marvel. Like I think it'll be most of that game, game yeah. was just like... Yeah. It was just a slog, mm, and yeah. it was brutal. And then it was just because Tex kept snagging everything, True. and Adelaide kicked incredibly accurately. Yeah, if they didn't like kick Rich accurately, Shelley yeah. and like Rankine and stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Blues, you know, got gifted a couple out in front, but also look, I just feel like this will be a bit under and it'll be a bit of a tough one. So I don't Fair know, enough. Leo, who are you going? I think the Blues will win, and of course, I've tipped them by under a goal. I think I've done that every Smart. every yeah. week, uh, just to get Jim a bit nervous. But, uh. <laughs> it sucks. Well, they don't win. They, they either lose or win close games. Yeah. That's just what they do. You can't it? just win one game easily <laughs> just to make my life just by double Jim. Wait till you play <laughs> North or uh, Hawks. I, I already played North. Oh, well, you, yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> you, you smashed us. You smashed yeah, us. Yeah, it was a good Friday. Like there was other stuff going on, right? But whatever. <laughs> Brisbane, Geelong. Oh, you don't want my tip. That's all right. Did you? <laughs> I thought you said it in the middle, but apparently no, no, no. not. All right. No, I said I said the no, over. Move on, no, move you're on. going the over, yeah. What's your tips? Uh, go. I'm going against you guys. That's why I wanted to get in there. I'm going GWS. I think uh, they're too strong in the counter attack. Don't rate uh, Carlton's defense to stop a lot of these big forwards uh, from GWS. So I'm going GWS by five, another close game. It's an interesting one Just with like my tip in there. the forward line set up as well for GWS, right? Jesse Hogan, Weeders. Riccardi. And you've got Riccardi. Colin then Brown. you've got Green, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah I'd it's actually... A, it, they're the clear best offense, 108 points per game. I, might, I don't might switch my pick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a, you've said it. You've said it. <laughs> it stinks. Long travel up to the Gabatois. Not the Gabatois any longer. No. They lost two games up there already this what season. The hell, yeah. Brisbane, 10 and a half point favorites at home. Uh, Geelong are looking. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Can not play bad. a bit of the move. Good not size. bad. Not bad. Good sauce. <laughs> uh, because they are sitting on the top of the ladder, same as GWS. Yes. Unbeaten. Uh, but then. Brisbane have looked very good. They came down here, beat the Demons last yep, week, yep. I want to say. Yeah, no. Correct. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> same with Jess, Jim. Same, same with like Jess. a full week ago. My brain's mine. <laughs> uh, the over-under is 162 and a half. This one felt weird to me as well, though. Like, that feels pretty low for a Gabba that game. That feels very low, yeah. For an mm. evening game, 7.30 p.m. I feel like that goes over because I think they yep. can both offenses can get off the chain, right? So mm -hmm. in terms of the ins and outs for this one, it's a weird sort of mix, right? Because you've got Jared Lyons coming in for Zach Bailey, who's that's out. A, that's a big out. A big Jared one. Lyons, I think, is a very good player, though. So that's yeah, not, that's not a horrible yeah. replacement. Yeah, probably He might be sub. Yeah, might true, be sub. true. And for Geelong. Huge. It's massive. Read out those four in stats, boy. Ah, uh, sure. So you've got Colin Jasny. That's Which is the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you've got Toby Conway. Decent ruck. Then you've got Patrick Dangerfield and Tom Hawkins coming back in, which... Uh, Cats fans will absolutely love because they need a bit of danger in the midfield, a bit of experience. And then Jezza could obviously do it pretty easy against mm. North last week on his own. But when you're coming up against a good team, you need Jezza and Tomahawk in that side. So The average age could be 30. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're the old, they were the oldest team like, a couple of years ago. Dad's so. army. Yeah, yeah. I just found this weird <laughs> that they managed both Zach Tui and Reece Stanley. I think... They, so they were. Yeah. They said they were trying to yeah manage Toby Conway because he's only played a couple of games and yep. he's like a bit of yeah. A, they're Toby like working sort of Conway. Into yeah, it. I think Conway's Tui's, a better. Tui's sort of in his last year, I'd say as well. So they're probably just being cautious. I'd Tui say. just might be a little bit old and sore. So Shannon yeah. Neal has got to feel pretty stiff as well because. What did he get three? He was all right four, last four. Week. Yeah, he was really. Four. But that was Connor the Osel yeah. Connor O'Sullivan goes out too. So yeah. it's a weird one, but I think the Cats look. That's it's a pretty hefty set of ins. But this Brisbane team at home, I just feel like this offense will be a little bit too good. Yeah. I'm just sort of like just loving this idea of Brisbane firing up, just going, that was a bit of a blip. 
Mm. We talked about it. Could it be? Oh, it was the, a big blip. Yeah. Could it be the year from hell for Brisbane? I don't think it is. No, no. they've come down here and won a game. So, fires back under them. Uh, how many times will the country road <laughs> actually play? I'm going to say five. I reckon Charlie. Charlie gets Karen's five. kicking five. Absolutely that means. goes mental. Unless they press the wrong button for yeah, someone else. I'm, yeah. I'm going to say five, but he kicks three, and they just have a malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that. I reckon he'll kick. Just yeah, someone playing on their iPhone. <laughs> 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 or just uh, they come out to that song instead of uh, the Brisbane Lions song, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to say three as well. I think he'll kick three. Uh, Cats defense is pretty strong. This Cats team is fascinating. Like the the year after the year after the yeah. flag, right? Well, they should be playing like this. They have a very good team. You've even got Grian Myers, who's the, the best. The forward line is so it's, it's awesome. well balanced. It's so Lionel well Messi. balanced. Lionel, Lionel Messi, Messi, he's doing the these celebrations, and he's he's got the most goals this by an absolute mile the last couple of years. And yeah, and you, people don't even talk about him. So they're they're flying at the moment. Oh, so, I think they're starting to talk about him a bit. Yeah, yep. yeah, not enough, I reckon. But this is a really, really Brown big low test because it feels like Geelong's uh, schedule has been, can we say, on the softer side? Uh, Definitely, yes. Yeah. They've I can't remember North, who they've played. They've played Hawthorne. Yes, They've true. played that's, the that's enough to say that they're they soft. They beat the Saints and you're like, yeah, cool. Saints then, is a good team. Saints at home. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm still taking Brisbane by two. I think this is going to be an absolute barn burner on Saturday night up there. Yep. Stats yep. boy. Go on Brisbane by 10. I think, yeah, I think it'll be a great game. I reckon Joey or Charlie will just kick a late one just to steal the game. Leo? Lions by 20. A bit more of a, a margin there. I just think Cats are due a loss. I love that sort of theory. They're <laughs> due a loss. loss. <laughs> They're playing awesome, but they should. Yeah, they they're just due a loss. A, That's what he does on the cricket today, so I reckon with uh, some, Well, I'm right. Yeah, you've been good. So. You've been good. Yeah. West Coast Fremantle of the Derby. Yes. The Dockers are 33 and a half point favourites, which after the way that West Coast that had, you know, their lines all throughout the season were massive. Like 60, yeah. <laughs> and they get one measly win no, no, over a horrible Richmond in. team, and it's 33 and a half. Yeah. I'd be like going way over this, I'm yeah. just saying. Hashtag spoiler alert. Uh, the Derby's 8, 10 p.m. our time in Melbourne. Standard Eastern time. Uh, 165.5 is the over and under. So <laughs> how do we feel about that one? That's a weird – Like, how do you like trust West Coast to do anything against a team that doesn't stink? Oh, that's, Can you? that's a great question. Uh, I'd be going under in this one. Yeah, under. I think because Frio aren't kicking massive scores. They get they usually get around 70 to 85. Well, they've lost those and last then, two games to Carlton yeah. and to Port last week, basically in the last two minutes yeah. of each game, right? And both have been both low them, scoring. Yeah, so. well, the Carlton game was like 40 to 40 until like yeah, late in the game. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, yeah. You can't you can't yeah see them kicking a massive score. So and when West Coast just say even Freo get ninety or eighty, they're not going to get double that yeah. themselves within West Coast. So the under is the you got to go the under. I think yeah. Ins and outs. Dom Sheed in for Luke Edwards who is injured. Sean Darcy. Uh-oh. That's, uh, oh, uh-oh. watch out, Super Coaches. Bulges. I just think even not just to do with Super Coach. I don't know if this could hurt their team a bit. Luke Jackson yeah. is a ruckman. He's shown he's a fit like that extra on bowler. Yep. I don't know. I, I still think he can score. Darcy's well. a very good ruckman yeah. though. So it will just be interesting how he goes. Uh, we'll see how many f- Harley Reid fend-offs this week. Oh. Over under nice. three. I'll take, I reckon five. I'll yeah. take under. I'll take I'll over. Take I'll take over. over. Sam Skrikowski and Matt Tabin go out as well um, for Frio. This is a tricky one. Having to manage. What just the for the simple idea of like how much do you think Frio will win by? Because I think mm, I agree. they smash them. I'm going Frio by 54. Uh, the big question for this is can West Coast lift for the derby? I think they lifted last week and this is the crash back down to earth. Yep. I reckon they lift. Oh. I'll get into it a bit later for my uh, big call, but because Frio struggled really? to score, I think West Coast will just hang around a bit. You sound like Jim this week. He's usually Galaxy like, Brains. Let's do it. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> You've transferred your, your powers to him. I don't know if I've got any Galaxy Brains this week. They're oh. all, all the games are too good. Yeah, they are good. Uh, I'm going Frio by 40. I think they cover that line as well. I was tempted to even put that up a bit higher. I just think their midfield, even their back line, you've got Luke Ryan down there is going to take yeah. about 12 intercept marks, I reckon. West Coast, even against Richmond, were just bombing it in there every time, and Richmond just couldn't, yeah. but weren't good enough to do anything about it. Whereas Frio have an elite defense, and they can uh, yep. they can put the clamps on them. I do like the idea that you've uh, thrown in there, stats guy. Frio have won the last four derbies by now yes. to fifty five, and I've taken them by fifty four. There you go. Yeah, nice. on. It's on the averages. Sunday, Sydney hosts the Gold Coast Suns at the SCG. Nineteen and a half point favorites. Another One good game. PM. This is a ripper because mm. the big question here. We'll just skip to it. I think the Stats Boys written, will Sydney continue some shaky form? Now, nah, the question is, <laughs> can Gold Coast travel anywhere south? Yes. Or no, just anywhere. Just anywhere. anywhere. Suns, anywhere have lost, of... Suns have lost their last eight away matches. Jeez. That, that's bloody horrible. 
What Matt Rowe just hates the taste of the grass outside of uh, the Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah. He's like, this grass is horrible. Uh, he gets what? on a plane. Where's the grass? I'm, I'm I, can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't see any grass. I can't see any grass. I reckon he might have. <laughs> the house, this is like, oh, what do you want for a meal? He's like, oh, I want Gra- some bloody grass. I'll take the salad, please. <laughs> <laughs> the greenest salad ever. No, but I reckon he might have to retire early with all this grass that he eats. There's going to be some... some you want to some retire, chemi- Matt Rowe. There's a lot of chemicals in there that he's oh, in. We're tired of nimbin him. Chemicals uh, like dog poo. Yeah. <laughs> 19, 19 and a half feels about fair because Sydney are obviously very, very good at the SCG. Yes. We yes. understand that. Gold Coast travel horribly, as you've just pointed out. The mm-hmm. over under is 172 and a half, which for how well Sydney can get going... And Gold Coast. And Gold Coast yeah. can fire up. Yeah. I actually love the over in that one. Yeah. So the ins and outs for this, we've got Sam Wicks, Peter Laddams, Cleary... Aaron Francis. Oh, this is just the extended bench. Extended now, benches. Yeah. It's uh, tough to tell. Out Caleb Mitchell. And for the Suns, we've got Rory Ack and Sexton. Sexton. Sexton being on an extended bench, though, as well, is just. I like, reckon the best option play. for him is the sub this week. Yeah. You think? Darcy McPherson, Jake Rogers, and Malcolm Rojas. Rosas. 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 Uh, there's Roll no the J S. there, Jim. It's Rosas. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm Rosas. Uh, out this as well. victory, uh, Rosas. So, Here's a gun. can Gold Coast travel... I still don't think – I remain unconvinced. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is still like a year there where they sort of build into like the point where they've gotten, I don't know, a couple of wins at home under their belt. And yep. then they go, right, now we can win a game away. And we're feeling <laughs> good. And Dimmer's like, good on you, boys. You get some chalky eggs. And away <laughs> they go. Uh, Sydney by 24 for me. I think they just sort of keep their arm's length and it ends up like, I don't know, surprisingly high scoring, I think. Ooh. Yep. You know. A weird afternoon. This is like a classic Sunday afternoon game as well, like 1 p.m. You're yep. just yeah. like, it's very bright up there. <laughs> these these jerseys look weird. What is it, red yeah, and white what, and orange? What are we doing here? They Jeez. might wear their blue the kit, blue, which I, reckon, I like, yeah. and a lot of people hate. For some also, I like it great, at night. It's yeah. a great day kit for the random, like, super sunshiny Sydney game. That's a perfect Is it is it sunny in Sydney? I don't know about it for the day. I like Sydney. it at night. Yeah, fair. Uh, right, so what are your tips there, Stats Boy? Uh, what was I going? Sydney by 13. I think this could be reasonably close. I don't, Sydney haven't been great the last three weeks. I know that Alex was saying the other week, it's probably handy they had a buy, just a reset. They have an elite team, but they haven't been playing that well. We're pretty shaky against Richmond, shaky against West Coast, but Gold Coast are horrible away. So that's the only reason I'm tipping yeah. Sydney because I was very tempted to tip Gold Coast because I think they've actually been playing better. But I'll go Sydney by 13. Yeah, I think like... If they were playing this on a neutral field. Yeah. Like, I'd be to like, say this was gather round, yeah. I'd be tempted to tip uh, yeah. Gold Coast, yeah. Because, like, you think about the two midfields. Like, it's awesome. You've got Goulden, yeah. you've got Chumbly Warner, uh, Took- the Heen Machine, yep. and then you've got on the other side, you've got Took, you've got Noah Anderson, you've just got Matty dudes, Bailey Humphrey, Matty Routh. A lot just of contested awesome. ball winners. That'll be exciting. So yeah. this should be a really, really good sort of, like, mm. arm wrestle, I think. But... I just trust Sydney, the SCG, a little bit too much. All right, Leo, who are you taking? Uh, I think Swans will win by about 26 points. But the main question we haven't asked yet, what about the ground dimensions at this, oh, at this game? Yeah, it's, I, it's, I heard it's smaller than the MCG. Is it, is it usually it's, smaller? It's way smaller. It's like a is meter. It? Like a meter. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. I wonder the effect that will have on the game. Look, well, it's it's the, I about that. the big yeah. questions are just the dimensions of the SCG. Yes. That's what we need to know. Like, Who will that favour? Really. <laughs> all right, we're all going to Sydney. North Melbourne Hawthorne. This there we is go. Come the on. biggest Rock clash. Cluster. Let's go. <laughs> I'm the so biggest. nervous now. I, I wasn't nervous oh, before. I, see, I thought he was now excited. I'm nervous. <laughs> I am excited and nervous. The barn burner to bring home <laughs> round six. We'll be sitting in here on Sunday night after I'll this game. I'll burn some barns if we lose. I'll tell Stats you boy will be 87 tins <laughs> deep. Swinging. 87 years old watching. Just oh, buddy, absolutely yeah. Get throwing wrinkles. neck punches as he's <laughs> walking around. Just squap <laughs> 4 p.m. at Optus Stadium. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It'd be funny if they just played out west. I thought it was COVID, isn't it? Are we back to lockdown? I, I just also it. like that I went full Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you used to do that as a joke. <laughs> what are you doing at Optus Stadium? Marvel at 4 p.m. I didn't change that, sorry. Uh, the Hawks are 16 and a half point favourites. Is that deserved, no, Leo? No. I feel like they are 100% should be uh, favourites. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know about 16, 16 and a half. It seems a bit much. Yeah, yeah. should be one. A three, <laughs> a three goal, basically, head start feels a bit... Generous, I think, for the way the Hawks have been playing. Yeah, yeah. we haven't won a game. So, like, why? Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't be three goal favorites. You should be favorites, though. I think you, you were decent against Geelong. Uh, you had a, Decent yeah. against Bombers. Bombers, yeah. Could have beaten the Pies. Whereas, yeah, exactly. So, we're, you guys have had about Last three. Last week off, was terrible, though. You've had about three close games, whereas North have had one. So, yeah. yeah. 
I am fascinated by this over under 176 and a half because you think about this from a North can get into a shootout mm-hmm. yep. because they play exactly zero defense. Yes. Uh, the Hawks, <laughs> pretty similar. The problem is yep. the Hawks haven't like scored the massive, no. massive scores. Well, they're yet. the, yeah, 18th. The worst uh, offense in the comp, unfortunately, for Leo there. Eight, like uh, 63 mate. points a game. But North aren't much better at 15, uh, 69 points a game. Nice. <laughs> because, like, was it, the, it was that Essendon game, right? Like, that they had, like, 83. It was, like, it was 107 to 84 or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a so, good something like that. And then there was a very close Collingwood game. But, obviously, that was at Adelaide Oval. Yep. Uh, that sort of turned – that was just, like, a, what, 70 – 77 and 72. 72, yeah. And so you've got these well, yeah. pretty weird low scoring on. But I think this just opens up a lot more I under agree. the roof. I think there's I no disagree. defense on either side. I reckon this is going to be ugly, turnovers galore. <laughs> it's going to be a eked out like 65-57. Jeez. Like ugly game. As long as North win, I don't care. I, I don't care if it's 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. First point is a rush behind. <laughs> just blow the zone. <laughs> just blow it. I did have a lady in front of me. On Saturday, who was cringeworthy. God love her. She was a bit older. She's like, blow this siren. It's like five minutes into the fourth <laughs> quarter. And she wasn't joking. She was just like, blow the siren. Blow the siren. She's like, head in her hands the entire fourth what, quarter. Was she a Which was support? one, yeah, Carlton okay. supporter. Completely deserved as well, head in the hands, because it was just watching it at a slow motion. Blow the siren rate. already, I'm nervous. They're like 16 <laughs> minutes in, blow the bloody siren. And you're like, <laughs> lady, you need to. Like, her, like the bloke sitting next to her is just like, I deal with this every week. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Look forward. Look forward. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Blow it early. Uh, Cameron Zerha, Will Phillips, Jackson Archer in on the extended bench for the Ruse and for the Hawks. Jack Gunston. Oh, I'm actually happy he's in. He's he's horrible. So he cool. normally yeah. dominates North, but he's on the extended that was bench. A while so I don't ago, think yeah. he'll play. He, Jai um, Surong, Surong. <laughs> getting in the head. And Harry Morrison for the Hawks. Uh, Nine games. Hunter's game for Suva as well, which oh, is pretty exciting. He's uh, going to kick 100 now. He's going to kick 100. Has <laughs> anyone lost more games in the first 100 games than Suva? Uh, ben Mackay, yeah, I'm pretty sure, has the worst record of all time. he hasn't played 100. Hasn't he? I don't think so. Ooh. I think when he got traded, he's he was got in injured the 70s. a lot. Okay. Interesting. I think, I think. When, he gets, when Ben Mackay gets to 100, he'll be, I think he'll have a worse record. That's a great stat. Yeah. Uh, the big question can the Roche. The Roche. Roche. The Roche. Roche. <laughs> Up the Roche. North Melbourne Roche. <laughs> can the Roche show some offensive power to kick? Too we just talked about this sort of. Uh, I think that North have the potential to get to eighty plus or ninety plus. I don't see the Hawks doing that no. here too often because they're only averaging sixty three points. If How you, have neither of you mentioned the biggest thing and the biggest <laughs> call in this thing? Here we go, Clarko Ball. Oh, oh, let's yes, go! True. I didn't it's the Clarko Ball. It Can is. we see some Clarko Ball? I didn't even think about that. What are you doing, Clarko? <laughs> get the Clarko Ball out there! Actually, yeah, Jeez. Is, that, is that an advantage for us because he knows a lot of the uh, no, game plans and the way we, they play? I thought we beat you when. Don't worry, he's back as, don't worry he's about back it. as coach. No, but he's, he's back as a full time coach now. It's, it's an advantage. I'm going to take he? it. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> well, we, have, we have Brett Ratton under the. Under, true. Uh, true. At Hawthorne. Now. I feel he like Clarko's just, just cashing checks and just breaking necks. That's all he's doing. Breaking he's just not caring. He's just like, whatever. This team is horrible. I'm getting paid a lot. It's the Dennis Pagan corollary. Just like, how much oh, does Carl, oh, Carl want to pay yeah, me? Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. I can't coach anymore, but this would be great. <laughs> this would be awesome. Clarko, they're just saying. But the Clarko Bowl. This is a weird setup. I'm actually going to take the Hawks by 12. I think they have just enough. So they don't cover that 16 and a half. No, I think, yeah, they're not covering the line. But I don't know. This is, I went back and forth on this because I do believe the North can win at Stats Boy. Yep. Sorry, Leo, but I think they can. Just because there's like. I'm not coming on either side. (laughs) There's a bit of like, there's. Like we've talked, we've talked about from Supercoach. There's too many dudes in that North Melbourne midfield, mm. but they do have a couple of pretty classy-ish sort of dudes. Tom Powell's gone really well. And if Super yeah. like gets off the chain against mm. this Hawks team, like he could kick eight, and you wouldn't blink. Like yeah. he only go. kicked one or something last year when he we, was we in red about, hot form. We all making him a to charge kick, like, of the six, I think, yeah. He's on Sam Frost, yeah. and he kicks one goal. I know. So hopefully <laughs> that doesn't happen again. All right, Hawks by two. Stats boy. Uh, North by one. Bit biased, Boo. but I genuinely think this game can go either way. So I'm just going to tip us by one. I think we can kick a bigger score. So yeah. Why not? Leo Hawks by eight because why not? <laughs> because Sam we're going to be in a punch on it. Three because Sam time, Mitchell's yeah. a horrible coach, and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not having that. <laughs> just wait for Hawthorne to beat Carlton later. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Big call for the weekend ahead, oh. ahead, ahead. Pies midfield gets found out. I think they've already been a bit found out with their so lack of def- call, offensive then. pressure. <laughs> But I think it gets a really big light shone on them because oh, the power midfield has been so good yeah. and could actually just really 
put the blowtorch to the Pies midfield this week. Yeah. And that's why at I think the G I've as well is a big call because they I don't mean, usually play bad at the power, G. Power, who knows? But I love this, so let's go. Yeah. Pies midfield get found out even more so than usual. Oh, Sats boy? Uh, Jordan Dawson to finally bounce back against Essendon. I reckon he's going to get 30 touches. The only player that was running two ways for Essendon pretty much the whole year is Durham. He's been awesome. Unless, like, Durham goes to him uh, or he plays halfback, even we're talking about. He shouldn't be in the forward line. I'm not... He Dawson. played forward last week. That's what I'm saying. Like, Dawson got sent forward yeah. and actually was pretty handy. Like, uh, he, 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 he kicked he didn't get, goal. Yeah, he kicked like, goal. Oh, he was, I think he should be playing halfback on midfield. And if he does, I reckon Essendon just don't have the type of guy to defend him. So I'm going to go 30 plus this I don't like that you're trying to, like, pick him to go back into form. That's just why it's a big call, mate. I don't know. <laughs> you it's don't the have biggest to like. of calls. It's the, <laughs> yeah. maybe the worst call, other than, oh. other than Jim tipping West Coast every second week. He Who got was one right last week? Yeah. Gotta, I've nailed it's it. Work Come on. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I think the entire point has been I've only tipped them He's once only tipped this them year. Once. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I don't so. know. No, no, he, really? he, he said that same as you. They'll push teams. They'd cover. Oh, okay. yeah, oh they, I think they, they covered. Pushed, lines. They pushed the dogs and then they lost by fourteen goals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was wrong. That's all right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Leo, what's yours? <laughs> Leo. Well, well, speaking of West Coast, they'll push Freo. Oh, <laughs> you absolutely just copied him. He just wants to be like his hero. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, within 10 points, I reckon, this will be. I, I just I think like Freo's that, yeah. offense just can't really blow away sides. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll just keep, like, West Coast will hang around. Probably won't be in front at any stage, but... Maybe if you like goals to just get it within 10 points. I, I like it. Interesting. Yeah. I do think that someone like Giant Miss or somebody can just go ham, though, on True. that West Coast. On McGovern? Go, Hang on a second. You're like, whoa, what just happened? Do they send McGovern to a Miss or not? I reckon, yeah. Probably. Ooh, that's interesting. You've still got Luke Jackson floating around too up there. Yeah, forward, so. true. I don't know. I don't know. I just... It's a big call. That's one. That's one. It is a big that's call. That's what we do here. That's what we do. Keep an eye on if Essendon or Adelaide can have two strong weeks in a row because they are the weird floaters in mm. that part of the yeah. ladder, right? Where it's like, uh, are they good? It's what just, are you yeah, doing? it's just the ones we got to go. Are they? Yeah, they actually yeah. good. Are they actually worthy of a final spot and things like that? So we St Kilda is very similar, right? But mm. they're playing tonight. So Bulldogs as well. Bulldogs, yeah. they're both two and three, like those two yep. teams. But each week we have no idea what's going on. Essendon and Adelaide, I think we learn. Like a giant amount. Or if like one if team Essendon, gets smashed or something. If Essendon goes yeah. out there and smashes them, yeah. you're like, Adelaide's oh, cooked, yeah. Essendon's good, Adelaide's cooked. Yeah. Yep. Adelaide put up a fight, you're like, they are okay. <laughs> and Essendon are frauds. Yeah. Um, as per usual. So, <laughs> uh, what are they? They're three and two and they're frauds somehow, but that's all right. Uh, the other ones, how many score reviews are we going to see this week? Oh, over under. That over under. Let's go. 163. Right. No, how many would you have a game? You'd have about three a game. I reckon just 27. Have like two a game. And I reckon. Easy. It's all a conspiracy to try and get crypto on the screen. Right? <laughs> they've got, they've got a call. set amount of like crypto, crypto like, ads. Yeah, yeah, how much yeah. they have to Ad show. That, yeah. is, that is the best. And call some, you've ever some had, idiot signed the contract, and then they reread it and was like, "Oh crap! Now we, now we need to score. Guys, 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 call another one. guys, we promised them sixteen <laughs> score reviews like per like round. What have we done? I think <laughs> the over under is about twenty five or thirty. So I'm going over. Uh, I'll go under. <laughs> this is yeah, a really good... I'd play since 20. <laughs> it's a really good keep your eye on because uh, I think we've all got... Like, you guys are obviously going on Sunday. Yes. But the big thing that I've noticed, like, we're at Gather Round. Every time there's a score review, the crowd is like, <sighs> we have had yep. enough. Well, it's yeah. just the Last one, week, yeah. it was the exact same thing. Yeah, here Carlton we go again. Fan, it's like, are yeah. you serious? Yeah. And obviously, it cost Carlton a goal, mm. probably maybe question mark. It stinks. And, like, being there, it stinks. The fans think it stinks. Just do your job. This was the event sesh, I think, on yes. Sunday night show. We've had a few Just event do your about. job. Do your job. Umpires. Just do your job. That's all we ask. Yep. Everybody in, that, in those stands is like, we paid a bunch of money to be here. Can you just do your job? We don't want to sit here and watch tally. This is ridiculous. <laughs> North versus Hawks. Why is this in there? I just put it just, I don't know. I, I forgot. We're talking I enough about I it. I didn't realize we were going to talk about it that much. <laughs> we have talked a lot yeah. about this game. But does one team have hope coming out of this game? I think they Keep both have that. hope regardless, but it's just no. how long that takes. I think yes. one team uses the other as a stepping stone <laughs> yeah. for a bit of hope. I <laughs> That's like what I reckon, that. yeah. Step on their necks. Yeah. Super coach, how are we feeling about this week? Uh, some weird ins and outs. Obviously, McKercher, uh was named. Yes, he's playing. So that yes. was kind of like the weird one, like where <laughs> I think Sanders is getting bevoed as we speak. He is sub. And McCurcher, oh, is he? Yeah. he is the sub. Where's my super coach team? Sorry, guys. We gotta, uh, Are we trading? Tra Can we get this guy? Uh, no, I'm not going to trade him. I'm going to put him to my bench. Okay. Interesting. Do you reckon we hold? Yeah. Hold. Oh, uh, it's tough. Actually, you break know, even of like just can... under 50. Yeah, I've been thinking about it this whole pod. Anyway, that's, right. yeah, that's rest of the super coach gear. Look, yes. Who are we looking at for captains? Go. I'm going VC on uh, Jack Steele. I think Same. he's been the best midfielder probably in the comp, uh, especially in super coach. I've done like 130, yeah. 140. So 
this is the week I think he's got to step up against the against the Bont, and Bont has been nowhere near yeah, so good it, as Steel. So it's yeah. a tough choice between Steel and Bont. I think I think Steel's been better, so I'm going to go. You just got to do it based off form, right? Mm. Steel's been in better form. Yep. I'm going to go the VC on Tom Green. Yep. Uh, against the Blues. Don't mind that. I've got the seen, captain on him at, at the moment. We've seen a few. Uh, obviously, Tom Green shreds, but he also shreds Carlton, and he doesn't mind Marvel. So off we go there. Uh, into the captain for the Heen machine probably on Sunday Ooh. against Gold Coast. But then I'm also thinking about Cheezle. Cheezle, that's who I've got mm. as captain. So Cheezle's yeah. captain on the Sunday. That's actually a great shot. He, yeah. He's going to take because... a lot of kickouts again. He's going to get a lot of the yeah, ball against we, the we are very inaccurate. Yeah. So there, so there's he like could be 10 taking kick-outs. 15 disposals yeah. right there. <laughs> the big one is obviously keep an eye on Luke Jackson and how he works with Sean Darcy. That could stink. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't. I'm obviously going to keep him because I'm like, I just don't want to sideways trade. No, you don't need it. Not not yet. But I don't think he can average 100 with Sean Darcy. But if you get a couple of weeks of just like bad Luke Jackson, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And Jack Carroll, obviously for the Blues. He's one of the other other rookies. But with all the injuries they've got, I think they need a little bit of speed. Sort of back back and forth. Uh, mm. They look very, very, very slow mm. last week, did the Blues. It probably, like, GWS, when it actually gets going, the Avalanche is unreal. Yep. Mm. I'm a bit worried about that, but I think Jack Carroll will be all right for okay. at least one more week. Other ones, obviously going to bring in Closey. Yep. Combin, how are we feeling about Combin? Stats, I'm boy? passing. Yeah, I think he's too expensive, unfortunately. He's got a really good break even. If you can afford him and, and justify it, yes, because I think he's going to average over 75. I said it on the other podcast, but... I think he's a bit too expensive. I'd rather get Graham and Clo- Closey, yeah. who are both under 117K, so yep. rather than 227. Uh, yep. Keep an eye on Sexton as well, if he actually plays. Oof, gosh, that's annoying. I know, that is annoying. Uh, Cadman is an interesting one for against the Blues. Uh, Still he's keeping, the, I reckon. Yeah. He's, he gets, a, gets actually a bit of the ball, contested marks and stuff, which is good for The Super big Cup. one is, do you bring in Elliot? Yo! Yo! He loves an injury. Yo! Huh? No! Yo! no. <laughs> <laughs> That's only like the Seinfeld thing with the with the value button. Uh, hello! Hello! Because yeah. uh, he like went massive obviously last week. Yep. He's now playing Freo. Defensive sort of actual big scoring options are pretty thin on the ground until we get the the, uh, the DPP sort of designations of like where they can play. I don't know. Mac Andrew as well on the bubble at 300. He was pretty good the last couple of weeks. But it's I just don't a mind really, him as a bit of a pod. Yeah. Really stupid press point though for a throw over 300. Yeah, it's so, just annoying. Yeah. yeah. Not much we can do. Any other thoughts on Supercoach this week, gentlemen? Oh, not really. No, I think no. we've covered it all, yeah. I think <laughs> uh, get check out the Supercoach official podcast with you on it. Yeah. They do a lot, obviously, with the Phantoms Lair as well yes. as the one that we do on Monday. So yep. good gear. All right, there it is, boys. <laughs> <laughs> AFL today. There cool. it is. Let's go. For today and for this week, we'll be back on Sunday evening to wrap up round six. I can't believe it's round six, Gerald. <laughs> what are we doing? He still producer, can't believe it. <laughs> producer Gerald's just like, Jim, Shut I can't believe this care, season will be done, I'm sick of listening to you. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that is it for AFL today. And thank you to social guy Leo over there. Cheers, Jim. Thank you to the stats guy. Thank you. Liam Go McKellion. north this weekend. Die. Uh, we will have on <laughs> AFL Today socials lots of videos about these guys fighting. Uh, we'll get a lot of stuff at up the on game, Monday, yeah. hanging out, doing lots of fun stuff. You can see me as well on Saturday afternoon watching Carlton probably get obliterated by you going, GWS. Jim? I'm going to be there. Heart rate up. Get the heart rate, live heart up rate. Up monitor. level three. <laughs> <laughs> brutal. Jim's just filming himself. He's just the phone shaking. <laughs> yeah. uh. I should actually try to figure out where, where my Apple Watch is, but either one. Uh, <laughs> smash a like across all the socials to see us all, you know, doing that fun stuff and yep. filling in all your footy gaps. Uh, Facey, IG, X, Threads, X, uh, X, TikTok, IG, I said that one. <laughs> YouTube, all the good stuff. It's right there. Perfect. Like, star, and subscribe to all the shows that we do as well. On all your podcast apps, what do we do? Cricket Today podcast, yep. Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, hold all tickets, and of course, this one, AFL Today. Uh, get around all of these, like Craig Bradley getting around like some sort of awesome petrol station pie in 1986 with a flowing golden locks behind his head on his Beautiful. way to go and win the 1987 flag for the Blues. <laughs> get around it, I'll tell you that much. Right, that's, that's not like it. I'm not going to say that. Actually. We'll catch you on Sunday night. For more AFL today. Till then, stop giggling, you two. <laughs> Look after yourselves and remember, we'll be back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.